in this video we are going to uncover all the learnings that we are going to have in this course starting from chapter 1 we are going to learn what is lab view why do we even use lab view and what are the benefits of lab view these all these are all the learnings that we will uncover in chapter 1 moving on to chapter 2 we are going to understand about the environment of lab view we'll start with virtual instrumentation what is vi then we'll learn about project explorer how to group files in lab view projects uh, we are going to learn about front panels front panel uh, is the window where we design our ui related task then we are going to learn about block diagrams block diagrams is basically used to develop our algorithms that is back end apart from this we are going to learn how to do coding in lab view uh, using front panel and block diagram moving on to chapter 3 we will start our programming part we will learn about how to design front panel that is ui related task and block diagram how to use pre built libraries functions native functions and then the important task how to document our code as well moving on to chapter 4 we are going to learn about loops starting from for loop how to implement for loop in lab view then while loop and then we will have case structures along with these three we are going to learn how to control frequency of our loops and how to plot data in charts or graphs then in chapter 5 we are going to cover all about structures for example we are going to implement arrays how to index array that is how to retrieve data from array and how to build once again array right so array is a data type of having n elements of different data type right whereas cluster is another data type having n elements that can have multiple data types right so apart from array we are going to learn about clusters type definitions strings and file io in file io we are going to learn how to read and write from files for example txt file uh, or ini file or even csv file then in chapter 6 we are going to learn all about troubleshooting and debugging as important as uh, developing the code we should be able to troubleshoot and debug the code as well so we will learn various debugging techniques in this chapter so that in future when we are developing large scale applications we will be easily able to debug it then in chapter 7 we are going to cover uh, how to develop modular applications modular application means for example you have developed a very large scale application and in future you want to add some more code or if you want to add some another module or modify existing module then your code should be modular enough in such a way that while adding or modifying some another module or functionality it should have minimal impact on all the existing modules this is what modularity is so in chapter 7 we are going to learn how to develop modular applications moving on to chapter 8 we are going to learn more advanced concepts in lab view such as the design patterns when we are developing low level applications design pattern may not be necessary but in high level applications we need to implement uh, our solution with a proper design pattern so in this chapter we are going to learn three design patterns one is state machine second is state machine with events and third is producer consumer right so as per our requirement we are going to choose our design pattern uh, among these three then moving on in chapter 9 we are going to learn how to synchronize our data between multiple loops or parallel loops or for example we have a program where multiple task is being running parallelly so how to move data from one loop to another loop or how to synchronize both of the loops so in chapter 9 we are going to learn all about synchronization techniques using notifiers queues and variables right moving on to chapter 10 that is event programming events are user triggered actions for example clicking on a mouse generates an event so you can take advantage of this functionality to create user oriented applications after learning the event based programming we are going to learn how to control user interface programmatically so there are multiple multiple ways in which you can control the user interface using property nodes or invoke nodes 
and then we have references there are two types of references that we are going to learn that is implicit reference and explicit reference so in this chapter we are going to learn all about how to control the user interface then at last we are going to learn how to create and distribute applications to the end customer so in this chapter we are going to learn how to create executable files and how to distribute to the end customer